My name is Corey Murphy. I play trombone in the band Lovely Socialite. We are a Madison-based jazz experimental rock sextet. And I wrote the tune Final Flight of Frog. My name is John Procruzzi, lovely socialite, super fan, number one, sitting here today with Corey Murphy to talk about Final Flight of Frog. How's it going, Corey? Hey, John. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. So we're, we're sitting here to talk about your tune, Final Flight of Frog, as we mentioned. Um, and as the lovely socialite, uh, super fan, number one, uh, I've heard this tune for <laughs> a long time. I've, I've seen you guys play this live. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen you play this live, but this tune was originally from... Uh, a prior album you guys were working on this back in 2013. We're we're going to hear a little bit of that 2013 version. So I'm wondering if you could just tell me a little bit about the history of the original version of this tune before we talk about sort of how it evolved and where it went from there. The uh, the band formed in college. And we've been playing together for a long time, and and the the tune is seven years old from the point that it was first recorded in the studio. So I think that that it's probably more like ten years old from the time it was first composed, and it sounded a whole hell of a lot different than this this album version that we've we've recently recorded. Every time you put out a new album, it's it's just a it's a, a process of really like kind of growing and maturing as a band. So um, as a result of that, the the tune too has has grown and matured as a song. I heard a, a tune when I was in college um, by the Roswell Rudd um, sextet, I believe it was, that had two double basses on it, and it started out with this really like cool, like ethereal, soaring melody over this kind of like dissonant, like bass drone. And so I wanted to create something that had that like that sort of texture at the top of the tune. And so the original version of the Final Flight of Frog, which by the way the name means absolutely nothing, I just like made up this invisible acronym. Um, I wanted I wanted to start with something kind of like that, and so we put our our awesome bass player Ben Willis to work on on this kind of eerie sort of droning. Um, it's kind of like a little three four sailor groove thing going on at the beginning. So this version of the of the tune obviously didn't make it on Toxic Consonance. That was that was what this was originally recorded for, correct? Yeah, Toxic Consonance. So we cut it from the record. We never actually ended up mixing it, but we did record it. Um, the way that we function as a band, though, is is like we we sort of function as like a composer collective at this point. And so when we're away from each other, we do a lot of composing independently. And all of us have contributed c- compositions and arrangements at any point in time. So when we got together after writing a bunch of tunes for Toxic Consonants, we played through a bunch of them. We probably had too much material for that album. Ultimately, that was one of the ones that got axed because it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't well enough, um, you know, prepared at the time we got to the studio. We, we were really crunched for time and the amount of rehearsal that we had to, uh, to put things together. Um, 
so in between Toxic Consonants and then we released an EP after that, it, it, there have been quite a few years um, between Lovely Socialite Activity, you know, between Toxic Consonants and then Double Shark we released after that. And then now we're putting out another full length a few years after Double Shark. There, there are these big lapses in time between we do anything with Lovely Socialite. It's just kind of how, how it works when you have six members of the band. All of us are, are busy. Some of us have children. We've all got jobs. It, in between time... I became part of a, a composer's group in Milwaukee area, and I took the new version of talk, of excuse me of Final Flight of Frog, which was very different than the original version, um, to this composer group. So it became com- something completely different. It was written for saxophones. Um, there was no drum set. It was written for like this. Um, it was like a West African marimba, like a very specific like African uh, mallet instrument that I, I couldn't tell you the name of right now. But um, uh, basically kind of gave me a kick in the butt to finish writing the tune. And so then it just so happened that we managed to get our act together with Socialite not long after that. And uh, and the, the tune was then, you know, given its final tweaks to be put together for the band to then play afterwards. So tell me a little bit about what happened once you got the got the tune in the studio and the band was able to start contributing ideas in the studio in, in the recording because obviously Socialite is a band that I think of largely in a live context just because I know you guys personally and I've just been at so many Socialite shows but in the recording you obviously have this flexibility to do some new stuff and I think we we hear some of that on the the brand new version of Frog. So can you tell me a little bit about that process? Yeah. So this, when we record at Blast House, which is a wonderful studio in, in Madison, we work with Landon Arkins, who is a, like a wizard and, and he's, he's gotten to know us very well and, and kind of can like read our minds before we even like open our mouths to say stuff. He's already like doing stuff on the computer to, to kind of like make the edits we want, which is really cool. We, we have the ability to like use the studio as an instrument, which is really cool. When we play live the versions of the tunes that you hear are different than the ones in the studio because the the amount of overdubbing that we do is is pretty immense on a lot of these things um in adding like extra layers of percussion adding extra sound effect layers there's one of brian's tunes on this record has like we we were picking up the brewer game in some of our uh headsets and that somehow carried over into the microphones so there's like a little radio static in one of the tunes and you're like that's really cool and it was like perfectly fitting for the tunes we left it in but for, for Final Flight of Frog, we did some overdubbing. There's like three layers of trombone at the end. But one of my favorite moments in it is um, a little homage to uh, Charles Mingus um, in the about the minute something mark. It's not long into the tune. It's pretty easy to catch because all of a sudden there's this studio audience that starts cheering and clapping along to this very spontaneous jazz break that comes into a tune that's not otherwise very jazzy or swingy. It's very like a Mingus inspired, like there are all these bass melodies going on in in Frog and and in this very moment, it's just like all of a sudden we're like swinging and there's like all this, hey, ho, and we're like clapping and cheering along for just like, you know, four bars. It's it's a very quirky socialite moment. And I, and I, I think it's my favorite part of the album. So we talked about how socialites changed uh in the last seven years for me, again, knowing socialite, um, since you guys first started, um, I've seen the band has changed quite a lot in terms of the sounds you use and, and how you compose your tunes. Um, you know, in the beginning, maybe you had a lot more of that, um, more, more experimental avant-garde improvisational stuff. And the band's kind of shifted a little more towards more of the upbeat kind of rock focused tunes, particularly with, with double shark. And I kind of hear a little bit of that 
um, in, in Frog. So I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about just how Socialite has changed in those seven years as a band um, in terms of how you write, how you work together. Well, Double Shark is kind of a, a unique example because that that's an EP that there's a five track EP. The first four tracks um, I wrote and then the fifth one is an arrangement of a Twin Peaks tune, basically a Twin Peaks melody that uh, Brian wrote. And it's kind of like a like a heavily improvised and like just heavy, heavy rock um, improv, like kind of post rock moment. Um, but that one was an intentionally rock EP. Like we decided we wanted to do a rock EP for the purpose of just like playing rock shows. And so that was Double Shark. And I think that's kind of my background. Whenever I write a tune for Socialite, I write like the, you know, like the more like the rock um, influenced tunes Whereas Brian will bring in the the kind of groovy like soulful tunes, and Pat will bring in like the improvised tunes, and and Ben brings in the the very like kind of mathematical uh, kind of like uh, contemporary uh, moments, and and there's just like we have all these different influences, which I, I think is my favorite part of of this band because what you get is almost like a compilation record every time we put out like a like a full band LP. And I think this latest album, which is still not named, I don't know, at the time this, this podcast comes out, we might have decided on that. But, you know, there's all sorts of different types of feels and vibes going on. And you can you can kind of feel the different composers in each one of those things because, you know, they're they're represented by their their styles. And and I think that's that's sort of my identity is is the is those rock moments. tried my hardest and, and I brought this up earlier on the the original version of Frog like the the opening that like kind of expressive and sort of droning moment is me like really trying to pull back away from that and trying to do something that's not as rock and it's more like expressive and kind of like ballad like and and I think I achieved that there but then ultimately like in the final version of it it's it, it only it, it's much briefer and then it does kind of go into that really kind of intricately composed um, groove, groove and rock rock feel. So I, I guess I kind of, I can't fight who I am. <laughs> so the, the two versions of Frog, like with seven years apart, obviously they ended up being super different. I, the, they're almost an entirely different tune, but the one thing that's the same is the, the ending of the very first one, I was just really happy with this, like what I call the the like frog groove or the frog ostinato, this like bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, that, that comes in and there's this really nice kind of like driving rhythm to it. Um, the thing that stuck with me was it just really sat well on the trombone. I really enjoyed playing it. But that was like the basis and the starting point for the second one. So really, it's almost like this new version is like a like a sequel to to the first one that that really is never going to be released. But that frog ostinato kind of became the, the like rhythmic basis is kind of like the clave that that informed all of the second one and so even while that bom, 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 isn't going throughout the entirety of the second one that that rhythmic feel that bom, 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 that one and uh kind of feel is there throughout it you know even with different pitch uh, associated with that rhythm so you'll, you'll hear that in different moments throughout the album version of Final Flight of Frog, which ironically was, you know, it's never the final flight. It's now, now the final, final flight of frog. Here we are. Well, let me say as lovely socialite super fan number one, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one of the most rewarding things about uh, following socialite is you you do get to know the the different styles of songs you guys do because because of how they're written um as you know sort of independently often and then brought together and you guys sort of put your socialite spin on it you can tell 
um, you know, Brian's really thrown a lot of Dilla into this tune. Oh yeah. Um, or you know, oh there's there's a there's a lick that sounds just like something Corey would write. I can I can usually guess who wrote a tune, and um, and yet it always sounds like Socialite because you have uh, you know kind of a unique combination of of instruments that you that you generally go with, and you have some um, unique sensibilities, and also just the fact that. You guys have been working together for so long. Um, that's that's there's certain aspects of how you perform together and and just interact together that only happen because you have that that deep history. So I look forward to hearing the whole album, and I look forward to uh, continuing down this this journey of of uh, investigating some of the tunes along the way. Yeah, man. 